Hello and welcome to a bonus Spark AR tutorial video. This video will be looking at the native UI slider and just a very quick and cool little effect you can do that we'll see on the screen now. So I'm just going to quickly uh, restart just to show you the effect in total. So you won't be able to see it uh, in this view, I'll have to show you on my phone um, later on, but when we click on the screen it will start these stars appearing above our head or around our head. And then using the slider, which doesn't appear within Spark AI and appears when you launch onto Instagram, I'd be able to slide the little slide on the side up and down, and that changes the speed in which the stars rotate around the head. So without further ado, we're going to start off with a clean pro uh, project and show you how this effect was achieved. Okay, so we've opened up Spark AR Studio and we're in version 90 on this. So we could start off by creating a new project and using the face tracking example and then downloading the head occluder uh, model. Uh, however, to make lives, our lives a little bit easier, we can also just use the face decoration, which includes the face, uh, sorry, head occluder model already in it. Because what we're going to need to do in order to have the stars go beyond the head is we need to have a model that will basically uh, have a transparent material on it that hides the model that rotates behind the back of the head, very similar to the orbiting head effect um, video, which is also linked in the tutorial down below. So I'm just going to launch the face decoration template. And first thing I'm going to do is obviously just delete these glasses. I'm also going to delete the glasses block, because I don't need those. And everything else we're going to keep. Uh, I'm going to rename this drag here to be Sway, and uh, it will make sense in a second why I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to right click on it and add a, another null object, and we're going to call this new null object Orbit. So as of version 89 onwards, if we go to Patch Editor, and I'm just going to ignore all this here because this is just the setup for the head occluder and we can keep that as is. Uh, as of version 89 onwards, there is a patch under user interface called Slider UI. Uh, you also have one for Picker UI. Uh, we'll look at that one potentially in another follow-up video. But with the Slider UI patch, we need to make sure that we go to Edit Platforms and turn off Facebook capabilities because this, uh, sliders don't work on Facebook filters and then we're just going to go back to the user interface and insert our slider UI element. So what this slider UI does is it takes a value from zero all the way through to so, um, one essentially or on off and everything in between and from that we can control the transparency, the speed, rotation etc, anything that we link up to this slider value uh, here. So. The way I went about doing this is I went to Add Asset, I went to the AR Library, 3D Shapes, and for the purpose of this tutorial I just used a star primitive and imported that into my project. There we go, like so. So this star primitive I'm going to drag onto my orbit. So we should have this sort of star currently uh, sitting in the middle of the head. I'm just going to pause my video so I can move it easier. And I'm just going to move this forwards and I'm going to go for around about 0 0.15 on the z-axis and the x and y I'm just going to keep at 0. Rotation values I'm just going to keep them all at 0 just to get so it's facing directly at the camera and doesn't have any um, positional offsets at this point in time. I'm then going to press Command D or Control D or right click duplicate. So I now I should have a second star and this second one I'm just going to make the Z a negative 0.15. Now if I just quickly show you the occluders, the head occluder here is using this occlusion material. So if we just look at the head occlusion material, it's an alpha with transparency set to zero. And if I just bring this material opacity up a little bit, just to show you what's going on, this face and head occluder is basically going to mask whatever it goes behind the back of the head. In this case, it's going to be our orbiting stars. 
So I'm kind of thinking of the kind of Looney Tunes style where somebody gets bonked on the head, stars start spinning around, that kind of a thing. So with these two stars selected, uh, sorry, with one of these stars selected, I'm just going to press Command D again. I'm going to change my Z value to be zero, so it's back in the uh, middle. And then I'm going to move on the X axis, 0 0.15. And I'm also going to rotate it 90 degrees on the Y axis. Now I'm going to duplicate this new star and then just change the posi position on the X to now be a negative 0 0.15, keeping the rotation at 90. Now I'm just going to have a quick nosy and see if I think this is too far away. So I'm just going to zoom in using my middle mouse button. And I think my stars might be a little bit too far away, so I'm just going to select them all. Actually now I'm just going to select the first two here. And I'm just going to change them from 0 0.15. I'm just going to bring them down to about 0 0.10 just to bring them a bit closer to the head. I just think it might be a bit uh, too far away for what I'm wanting to achieve. Like so. I'm now going to select this orbit and I'm going to press Command D. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a copy with all these stars are children of. And I'm going to have this as my second orbit. But I'm just going to offset the rotation on this by 45 degrees. This allows, this is just an easier way for me than to having to create each star and then rotate them 45 degrees around and around. Once I've got the four north, east, south, west created, I can just then offset by 45 degrees and parent them up. And this new parented orbit, I'm just going to make a child of the original orbit. Like so. There we go. So now I have that created. I'm just going to uh, refer to my notes for a second to make sure I don't go far. So when I was first originally building this, um, I was having a bit of an issue actually getting the uh, slider to work as I'd expect because when I first built this, um, the zero was actually nothing, so it wasn't moving. And as soon as I moved it up a little bit, it was moving super fast. But then as soon as I moved it to the top, it then started moving uh, really slow, which is exactly the opposite of what I wanted. I didn't want to go off fast um, and then basically slow again. I wanted it to be slow to fast. So thanks to a fa um, Josh Beckwith on the um, Facebook community uh, for basic answering a query I had, um, he recommended I use the two range patch and that worked amazingly well. So the values I found worked was I used a minimum of 10 and I used a max of 0 0.1. So it'll have a bit of movement when it loads in but it won't be super fast. So 10 seconds roughly um, it's the sort of speed we're working at the beginning. So it's going to move quite slowly as soon as I slide the slider up, it'll, it'll move, it'll start, it'll increase and become faster. If I was exactly at zero, it would be not moving at all. So from that, I'm going to drag and add a loop animation. And I want to link this to the duration, not the enable, like so. So it will take the value of our slider as its duration to um, affect the speed of our transition. I'm going to drag from our progress to a transition patch. And I'm just going to keep set all these to zero, except for the Y. So I want it to start at zero on the starting value for Y, and I want it to end at 360 on the second value for the Y, or end value. I'm then going to select my orbit, scale, uh, sorry, rotation. And I'm just going to link this up to my transition patch here. So now, if I just look it up, you should see that they are orbiting around. I can, uh, if I just pause it, I can still move the transition of them all using the uh, orbit null object here as the uh, controller. So if something that if I'm not quite happy with how something's positioned, I can just tweak it to sort of looks the way I want it to. 
Uh, but in fact, I'm just going to keep it as is for now because it actually is kind of fine for what I'm after. Uh, I am actually just going to move it up a little bit on the Y just to move it up above the head a little bit. So it's not quite um, at eye level. It's just kind of sitting around the forehead. And again, you can kind of eyeball this or use values that you think would be appropriate. So at the moment, our stars will spin. We freeze to deploy this onto our phone. So we're going to test some device and send it to my um, iPhone or Android phone using the Instagram app. I'd be able to drag the slider and the speed would change. However, I actually want these stars to uh, kind of fade into life. I don't want them just to appear. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a material control to adjust the opacity essentially. So the way I found to do this is I right click and I'm using a screen tap of my controller. This could also be a, um, an action such as photo taken or screen recording or pressing an object on screen like a, um, a button or plane. And I'm just gonna drag from my tap to a loop animation. This will automatically create our switch for us. And I'm just going to have this R mirrored turned on. I'm going to drag the progress to another transition patch. And this is going to be the control for our sway. So I want it to have a bit of um, walking motion. So I'm going to go from 12 to negative 12 on the Z, keeping the X and Y at zero. And I'm just going to link this up to my sway controller here. To the rotational value of that. Okay, and using the same screen tap, I'm going to then click and drag to an animation patch. So when the screen is tapped, I want this to play. Drag this to another transition, but this transition is going to be slightly different. I'm going to change this type to be a color. And this is where we could start to get a bit creative. So we could uh, have different color transitions mixing together. We could use gradient uh, patches with a mix to adjust a kind of gradient uh, fill to it. I'm just gonna go with a bog standard start to end single fill. And I want this to go from, um, I'm gonna make this a white color and I'm gonna make this opacity zero. So it's gonna go from zero opacity, i.e. it's not going to be uh, visible to the user, to a colored fill uh, end of color setting. I'm going to also change this to be a bounce in and out just for the fun of it. I'm going to go to my star mat which is the material that's applied to all these stars at the moment. I'm going to change its type to be standard just so it takes in the light in our scene. Then I'm going to select the texture and hook this up to my transition patch like so. So now if I hit play and I simulate touch and touch the screen these stars will fade into uh, life. I'm also just going to change this color to be a yellow just to make it a bit more vibrant and reset. So now when I tap, these stars will fade in. I can change the speed of that so I can make it a bit slower so it's not quite as dramatic. There we go. And already as I can see, my uh, offset's a little bit off. So I'm just going to pull my uh, effect back into the uh, on the Z axis a little bit. So let's pull the Z axis back. Oh, maybe not so crazily. So again, little micro adjustments tend to be uh, all we need to do. So I hit play, and now we should have our stars rotating around the head, having this bit of swaying motion. And once we deploy this onto our phone, we should have a slider appear that we can adjust the speed at which this rotation is occurring. Effect finished and we've double checked all of our patch editor setup. We just need to make sure that we have our slider UI enabled. So this could be triggered via any action. Uh, we're just going to have it enabled by default. Then we can go to test on device and send it to our camera and see it in action. Okay, so I've now launched my effect to my phone. So if I tap the screen, I should have the stars appearing and they're starting to rotate. Uh, on my uh, side here, you can see I've got a slider. Uh, bear in mind, I'm running this on an iPad, so it's actually the opposite way around to what it looks like on your screen, and you won't have this sort of gobbledygook there. 
But as I slide my slider up, the speed in which my um, star spin will change. And as I bring it down, they will slow down like so. And again, if I want to adjust the speed in that, within Spark AR, I just change my uh, minimum and maximum values. So 0 0.1 will be very fast, 10 will be quite slow. Anyway, hopefully this kind of gives you a, an idea of how you can look at the native UI slider native controls within the patch editor uh, to create some kind of nifty effects. So you can combine this with um, UI elements. Bear in mind, you can't combine a picker and a slider. Uh, the two don't go hand in hand. You can't have a slider and a picker uh, necessarily um, at this point in time. Um, so again, uh, and you can't also have custom UI elements uh, but as long as your effect kind of adds to the value of what you're doing, uh, you can kind of play about with it. So I've been Steve Fisher. This has been a bonus catalyst uh, channel video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.